Uh, yes, hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Looks like we're at time, and there's a decent amount of people here. I am going to turn off my camera, as recommended, and get this started. Okay. Uh, welcome to a tour of Drupal Tours. Uh, I posted a link in the uh, chat here, and so did Amy June. Uh, the slides are available. They're Google Slides, so you can uh, follow along and click any links. And Amy June also set up uh, live transcriptions, uh, live AI-powered uh, captions transcriptions. Uh, so both of those links are in the chat if you want to follow along. And welcome to a tour of Drupal Tours. OK. Uh, I am Jim Birch. I'm an engineering manager at Canopy Studios. I've been Drupaling for seven or eight years now, uh, maintainer of a few modules. Uh, before I moved to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, I was living in Chicago, and I helped uh, run MidCamp and the uh, Drupal Chicago meetup. Um, and I hang out in the Drupal SEO channel on the Drupal Slack if you ever want to reach me. I am calling in today from Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, originally home to the Nauset people who welcomed the first Europeans to America. Uh, uh, I work at Canopy Studios. We're a fully distributed agency uh, in North America, uh, and we are hiring uh, a bunch of talent. Uh, so if you're looking for a job in North America, please come see us. So the tour module, uh, nine years ago, Cameron Egan's uh, created an issue to write a tour module and add it to core. Uh, there's the link right there. It's pretty cool to do some digital uh, Drupal archaeology to figure out where this content came from. Um, my favorite thing about that issue is uh, uh, Lee Rollins changed it at some point and said to reduce the Drupal learning curve and frustration. So what are Drupal tours? Uh, they're guided tours uh, of core functionality. Uh, when enabled, the tour module provides guided tours via the site interface via tooltips. Uh, so tours, huh, what are they good for? <laughs> uh, guiding content administrators around the admin UI. Uh, we've extended them to guide website visitors on the front end, uh, guiding quality assurance testers. So if a, a QA engineer comes into your pull request and can follow a tour, uh, they're great validation steps. Uh, so exciting news. What got me really interested in tours is that in Drupal 9.2, uh, a bunch of uh, smart Devs added the Shepard JS script uh, to replace the unsupported jQuery Joyride library. Uh, so, you know, Drupal's trying to get away from having uh, jQuery in its core, uh, and the Joyride library was un, uh, basically not worked on in the last two years. Had a bunch of accessibility fixes, and uh, you know, getting rid of the jQuery element uh, also brought better performance. Uh, along with the Shepherd library is a Drupal uh, module YAML file. Uh, so this is the same kind of config file that we're used to seeing in Drupal 8 and 9. Uh, the top part uh, basically describes the tour, and then there is a tips section that is one tip for every popover. So what tours are in Drupal core? Uh, the biggest, most prominent one is the views UI. Uh, so basically, if you have views open, uh, views UI enabled and tour enabled, you get a tour button in the admin toolbar in the top right, uh, and you can step through the different parts of the views UI. Uh, Umami also extended this uh, to the front end route uh, and put a welcome tour on their homepage. Uh, and they did a cool thing, too, is they extended the tour CSS library and styled the tour uh, like their theme. Uh, there are a few more. Uh, there was a multilingual tour that uh, crosses different Drupal core modules. 
So it goes into locale and the language module. And then there's also one for the block layout. But there are more possibilities. Uh, there's a meta issue in core uh, that's kind of slowed, uh, but basically there is the idea for tours for modules, tours for important functionality to Drupal, like you know when you're going live, what are the important settings you should change? Um, and then different view screens uh, throughout the admin UI. Uh, so there's the link there and there are you know a couple dozen at least issues that are in the process of getting more tours added so how do we access tours one the user needs the access tours permission so if you assign this to uh, anybody anonymous or all the all the permissions you all the roles you can basically see the tours uh, tours are listed at slash admin slash help uh, there is a tour button that is triggered in the upper right of the admin toolbar. Uh, you can directly link to a URL that has a tour on it and add question mark tour to the end of the URL and the tour will start. Um, so uh, if there are multiple tours on the page, you can call them out. Uh, there is a patch that adds a tour block. So for people that can't access the admin toolbar, you can use this block in your design and call out the tour or have the ability for the visitor to call out the tour. So uh, making tours, there are a bunch of great examples. Uh, there is a Drupal contribution guide, create a tour task that takes about an hour. Uh, and then there's also the examples module or examples for developer that has a tour example sub module. Uh, both of these are a little out to date uh, because of the changes in 9.2, uh, but there are issues to update them. So let's look at the YAML file that uh, I brought up earlier. Um, so basically, uh, regular config, and then uh, the tip section is an array of different tips in the tour. Uh, so the front, the ID of the tour, uh, the name of the module that you're putting this tour in, uh, so basically a custom module or a contrib module, uh, the language of the tour, because tours can be in different languages, uh, a name for the tour. Uh, this is not used in core itself, but uh, the tour UI module, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, uses that. Uh, routes and route parameters. So this is how to find the URL that it's going to go on, and if there is any parameter in there. Uh, and then tips, which is an array of the tips uh, that make the tour. Uh, and this defines the name of your config file. So basically, it, the config is a tour. And then the next dot over is the module that it goes in. And then the next dot over is the unique ID you gave it in this YAML. And then the tip basically is a nested uh, list under the tip ID. So basically, you give your tip a unique ID uh, and then repeat it. Uh, there is only one plugin right now uh, called text tips. Uh, but in the future, if somebody wanted to make another plugin for tips, like maybe an image tip or a media tip, uh, it could be extended. Uh, the title of the tip, the body of the tip, which accepts some HTML, uh, the weight, so the uh, that defines the order of the uh, tips, and then the selector. So uh, with the change to Shepard, you can attach a tip to any HTML element in the DOM. So a class, uh, an ID, um, or even like a very complex uh, HTML selector, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then the position, uh, the Shepard JavaScript is very smart about not going off screen, uh, but you can also position the bubble uh, relative to the target in, uh, I think, over a dozen different ways. Top, top left, top center, top right, left, top, all the way down. I'll show you that in a minute, I think. Um, speaking of routes, uh, so uh, some routes allow parameters. The, a route is you know, basically where a 
page lives. Um, so here's some examples. Uh, if you wanted to put a tour on every edit form, you could do that. Um, but that seems a little silly because every edit form is different. So this allows uh, parameters. So you could say, I want it on edit form with an ID, or we actually have a, a small little helper module that changes that to bundle. So you could say, here's a tour for every article edit node. Um, and the same goes for entity node canonical, which is the front facing uh, version of the entity. So you could add it to all front end nodes, like every page on your website. Uh, you could add it to a specific node. So you can give it a node and then a node ID, or you can add it to every article. So if somebody came to your site, you could have a, a tip on uh, or a tour on every article, every resource, every basic page. So uh, not everybody is as nerdy as me and likes to write YAML, introducing the Tor UI module. So the Tor UI module is a contrib module that adds an interface for Tors. Uh, here you can add edit delete Tors and tips. Um, this would keep it in your site config, uh, but you can also export it and put it in a custom module for distribution. Uh, so here's what that screen looks like, a little easier to read than YAML. You know, you have your name, you have your module, the routes that it goes under, and then a array of tips at the bottom. Each tip looks uh, easy to configure here to title, weight, uh, what selector it's going to go on, uh, and then the location and the actual tip content. Uh, to extend to Tor UI a little bit more, uh, the Tor Builder module adds a, a cloning and exporting of Tors. It's just a simple helper module that allows you to basically click clone if you want to just take this Tor and make another similar Tor or export the config, give it to a developer to put it in to code. So it really kind of helps bridge the gap between like Tor creators and uh, developers. Uh, wanted to talk about translating Tors. Uh, so every Tor has a language. Uh, so you could do it one of two ways. You could use Tor UI and create a completely new config that is in Spanish versus English, or you could do it through the uh, translation interface. So uh, you'd enable the interface and configuration translation modules, uh, visit the config translation configuration, find your tour, uh, create your tour, uh, select your tour from that list and click the translate button, uh, add your language and change the tour and save, and you'd have a brand new config for that tour. Uh, and then visit the routes, uh, switch the languages and verify that everything worked as expected. Uh, extending tours. Uh, so we talked about the tour builder. Whoops, I think I went backwards. Uh, the helper module I mentioned earlier, tour enhancements. Uh, I just released this on Drupal.org yesterday. Uh, it just does two simple things. Uh, it adds the ability uh, to add uh, bundle parameters uh, to those routes. Uh, and it also has notes where you can extend it. So you could actually say, if this tour has this specific field, you could add a tour parameter that way. Uh, and it also demonstrates how to extend the tour slash tour styling library. So you can add additional CSS or even JavaScript uh, to uh, the module, you know, for your custom theming. Uh, purposes. Uh, and I copied that from the fine folks at Umami. Uh, and then here's what that looks like on the front end. So here's a, a little demo I was working on. Basically, uh, I attached this to uh, a route that I had created for this uh, style guide. Uh, and the front end theme works just as nicely as it does on the back end. Uh, so issues, uh, there are currently 57 open issues, uh, in all states of, uh, change, 
Uh, there's a lot that are active. There's a lot that needs review. Um, there are a lot that needs the transition between what was there when the jQuery Joyride library and the uh, new Shepard JavaScript library. Uh, there's even some that can be, you know, abstracted out, and we can see if we could fix these in the Shepard JavaScript library uh, versus uh, in the Drupal.org module. So I opened it up an issue yesterday that uh, asked about uh, having the scroll stop. So for uh, users that prefer um, no scrolling, uh, basically, is there an option in that library to move uh, to have that option so users don't have to see scrolling if they don't want to. And that is a quick tour of Drupal tours. I left a couple minutes. If anybody has questions, uh, please post them in the Q&A. If not, thank you very much for this opportunity to, to share this with you. Uh, question, is it possible to trigger the tip for a specific element using a custom link or else instead of start tour in the admin toolbar? Uh, yes, you could do uh, that URL with question mark tour. Uh, so it would cause a page refresh, like if you were on the same page, uh, but uh, it does work. So uh, what I did for a client uh, last year uh, was before the, uh, that uh, block uh, module was or block patch was really ready. Uh, I used simple pop-up block, which we you know loaded a pop-up in the bottom right and said, "Hey, there's a tour in this page," and then uh, click the link, and then the tour would start. Uh, and then there's also the patch that adds it as a block, so you could keep it uh, down. Uh, okay, so the next question, thank you for this presentation. How much do you estimate the implementation of TORS compared to the implementation of the features itself? Uh, if you have a feature that took about five days to implement, how long do you spend approximately to add the TOR description? Uh, so I would say that it's part of it and a pretty quick part. Um, setting up uh, TORS in general is you know probably a few hours process. Uh, setting up the tour uh, if you treated it as your validation steps or even in your user stories i need a a user to do this this and this um creating the yaml file you know should take you know half an hour at the most you know to implement what that uh, feature does uh, so i would say the time of tour to feature once it's in your development workflow, you know, should be minimal. Uh, how stable is Tor UI for Drupal 9? Uh, there's a patch that brings it up to Drupal 9.2. I've never had a problem with it. I think it's uh, just a uh, issue of priorities for the developers that maintain the module and, and do a lot. So I've never had any issue with it in Drupal 8 or Drupal 9. Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for coming and asking such great questions. Um, love to hear the survey results uh, if they publish those, uh, if you attended the session, uh, whether now or in the future on, on the YouTubes. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.